I believe in the gospel of power. I truly believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Christianity is just a discussion of fables without the power of the Holy Spirit. The difference is the power of God. Hallelujah. We need the power of God, especially over the issues that plague men in today's world. Enough of discussions. We need the power of God to heal, to deliver, to change lives. We need the power of God. We need the power of God. We will keep giving vain explanations until the power of God is introduced. Pray one prayer. Father, let your power be revealed in and through my life tonight. Please be serious. Pray. Whether you are outside, you are following online, let your power be revealed in my life. You are a man of God. Pray. An encounter with power tonight. Let your power be revealed in and through my life. You came here in need of a touch from God. There's no distance in the spirit. Connecting from your home, connecting online, connecting by way of television. Let your power be revealed in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For someone tonight, God will surpass your expectations. In the name of Jesus. Let your faith rise tonight. You have come to the God of heaven. And he will not disappoint you. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated gloriously in God's presence. It's always a joy to have us around. And for all who are worshiping with us for the first time, across the nations and in this place i welcome you in the name of jesus sit back with joy and watch the wonder walking power of jesus the wonder walking power of jesus his power to save his power to heal his power to deliver this god we serve is a mighty god Please convince yourself that you are not hearing a lie. This God we serve is a mighty God. It does not take him too long. Overnight, like it is tonight, God can turn someone's story completely in the name of Jesus Christ. This is not a preacher's gibberish. Believe me when I tell you this. God can come to you. I know we are many, but don't forget that when he deals with us, he can come to you. Many people have phone lines, but when they call you, everybody's phone does not ring. It is yours that rings. In spite of the fact that there are many phone lines, when I dial your number, it does not call another number. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'll give a very short charge, and then I'll begin to pray. The charge will help us to receive maximally there are many believers who need to be taught how to receive you see if you're not taught how to receive god can be in a place mighty things can be happening and yet you may not receive it is very important that we open up ourselves to scripture and understand how god operates one scripture and then we'll begin to pray by the way let me start by saying this while i prayed and prepared for this meeting even before today god is going to be visiting us across several areas but there are four major areas that came to me by revelation and god told me these are the core areas he's going to be dealing with tonight number one restoration of spiritual fire this the lord told me there are people who will come in need of restoration Number two, healing. I know we're going to be ministering deliverance, but tonight God wants to heal. He truly heals. The area of healing. Number three is the area of stagnation. This came to me by revelation. Stagnation means that something pegs you at a level and you do not make progress. Consistent with the investment of your efforts. 
And then number four, God tonight wants to break by prophecy financial limitations. So there are many things that God would do, but I'm announcing this to you as it came to me by revelation so that we'll connect by faith. Are we still together? First Corinthians chapter one, we'll start our reading from verse 18. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth and he gives an instruction that we need to learn. He says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Please pay attention. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Next verse. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? It's a question, 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. 22. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. Uh -huh. But unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Take note of 24, we're coming there. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Go to verse 24, please. It says, But unto them who are called, both Jews and Greeks. Christ is the power of God and Christ is the wisdom of God. Please pay attention. The word Christ comes from the word Christos. It means the anointed one, which is Jesus Christ principally, but it also means the anointing. The anointed one revealing himself together with his anointing. That is the word Christ. So principally is a name for Jesus, but it also extends to all who are anointed with the spirit. Are we together? Remember the Bible says the kingdoms of this world, Revelations eleven fifteen, are become the kingdoms of our God and of we, his Christ. And he shall reign forever. Are we together? So back to 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 24. It was a revelation God gave me that will guide our receiving tonight. The Bible says, when the anointing of God, Christ and his anointing, is revealed in the midst of his people, it operates in two dimensions. Number one, there are people who the anointing will be revealed to as the power of of God. But there are others the anointing will be revealed to as the wisdom of God. That both dimensions of revelation is still Christ. Are we together? There are problems that people have in their life that require the power of God head on. For instance, attacks of darkness. For instance, situations that need to be corrected supernaturally for such you don't need any counseling you do not need any discussion there has to be an encounter with the supernatural power of god but there are other situations that require the wisdom of god not just the power of god the bible says when christ is revealed he is revealed in the midst of his people as the power of God, but also as the wisdom of God. So there are people, you came here tonight, and what you need is the anointing, but revealed as the wisdom of God. God begins to give you insight as to what you need to do to provide answers to the needs that you have. Many issues in our lives, I wrote here, 
require the power of God. Many issues. They require the power of God to supernaturally correct unfavorable conditions. Health conditions, for instance, demonic conditions, for instance, would always require the power of God to supernaturally correct those conditions. The Bible is full of conditions that were changed supernaturally by the power of God. But there are many other situations that require the wisdom of God. That means you must understand the principles of the kingdom are located for that result you desire. This is very important. If you do not understand this, it may be difficult to receive maximally. That means in a meeting like this, you can find people falling under the anointing. You can find people receiving things, a divine touch from God. And usually people stand up and wonder, what now happened to me? Why did I fall, for instance? Why is my body shaking? Why is this supernatural experience happening? And many people return back and cannot discern what just happened. The Bible says when the anointing, when Christ is revealed, he comes to some as the power of God, but he comes to some as the wisdom of God. There are people, as you fall under that anointing, you don't have to fall, but I'm saying, for instance, if that happens to you, you can stand up and what happened to you was the light of God the solution to your problem just came to you. Just because you fell does not mean it's a demon going out. You can stand up from that experience and supernatural insight as to what to do. Christ as the wisdom of God. Christ as the power of God. Many times when we come for meetings like this, people just focus on the charismatic dimensions of the dealings of God and people fall, they rise, they cry, they shout and they return back and do not know what to do with these experiences. Paul is giving us an explanation right now that every time you see the anointing, the Holy Spirit and his anointing moving in the midst of his people, Christ is being revealed to some the power of God to correct unfavorable conditions but to some, he's bringing you impartation of grace and knowledge. For instance, we're dealing with issues here of financial limitation. You can see that um, there are people, for instance, who it is just a demonic thing. No matter what they do, they cannot rise. They cannot experience that dimension of the glory of God. For such people, you need the anointing to come as the power that breaks that yoke. Are you seeing now? But there are many people who have been, they do not have the wisdom to make correct financial decisions. The anointing will still come to them. But it will now come as the wisdom of God. You will hear something through the word. While we are ministering, you will hear something all of us are not hearing. And that becomes the grace. You will go back from this miracle service, for instance, with a grace to now begin to walk in keeping with the principles that make for increase. The anointing still came to you. Because most people don't know what to do with the anointing. And so when we receive, when we shout, Amen, receive the anointing, receive grace, Amen. Some fall, some cry, some shout, some roll, and you know, all kinds of things happen to people. And at the end of it, we stand up, we dust ourselves, we share the grace, and we go back. And sadly, many do not finish up that process to receive the testimony desired. 1 Corinthians 1.24. Let's look at that scripture again. But to them which are called. Say, I am called. One more time. Say, I am called. How do you know you are called? Acts chapter 2 from verse 39, I believe. Acts chapter 2. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We didn't just come, we were called. So I know that I am called. And the Bible says those who he called, he foreknew, he predestined. God called me, called me to reveal his glory, called me to reveal his grace. 
And the Bible says, when that anointing comes upon the called, it is Christ revealed as the power of God. Christ revealed as the wisdom of God. Is someone learning? So that when we begin to pray, your heart is expectant. And it does not mean he has to reveal himself as the power or the wisdom. He can reveal himself as both. That should be your prayer. That Lord, you come to me as your wisdom and your power. Wisdom to rise and to reign. Wisdom to rule. Let me show you something about the power and the excellency of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8. Let's start from verse 1. Very quickly so we can begin to pray. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Verse 2. She standed in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths. She cried at the gate, wisdom now, at the entry of the city. This is already a revelation. Wisdom has gone to the city before you, and she's crying from the city and coming in at all the doors. Verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, simple there means void of understanding. Understand wisdom. O ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right thing. Wisdom now is speaking. My mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination unto my lips. It says, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Verse 9. They are all in plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that findeth knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Do you know what this is saying? Wisdom is saying if they keep me here and they keep silver, make no mistake to choose silver. When you choose me, you have chosen more than silver. Look at the power of wisdom. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her. You have to pause here and think of all the things you desire. I desire a house. I desire a car. I desire to move from a tenant to a landlord. And wisdom is saying these things are mundane compared to the power you have when you have me. That means for the many prayer requests you have written, 10, 15, 8, 9 of them, wisdom is saying, if you choose me, all of those things will no longer become requests. 12. we we'll find somewhere to stop. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. 13. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. 14. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom, I am understanding, I have strength. So wisdom is not weak. By me, now, wisdom is speaking. Kings here yeah, does not just mean the male, royalty. That means if it is true that the Bible has made you royalty, that we are a kingdom of priests, he is saying if you want to reign in life, you will need me. And by me, princes decree justice. 16. It says, by me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor. This is what I'm looking for. Riches and honor are with me. So... When you want to withdraw your money, you go to an ATM. You don't need the ATM, really. But because the ATM contains something that you need. Is that true? You go to the ATM and slot in a card, type whatever you need to type, and it brings out cash, physical cash. You hold it there. So he's saying riches and honor are with me. The same way money is inside an ATM. Wisdom is saying when you come, there is riches and honor you know what honor is 
Honor means to be perceived to match your true worth. When you are honored, it means that men give you the credit and the perception that truly matches your worth, your sacrifice, and even surpasses it in many respects. It is possible to be a noble person and yet not have honor in your life. And you will be perceived far below your true worth. Are we together? Yes. When God brings you honor, he lifts you to match your sacrifice. He lifts you to match your knowledge. He lifts you to match your level of spiritual investment and will even surpass it for you. He says, riches and honor are with me. Yea, lasting riches that come with righteousness. Let 19 be the last verse. It says, my fruit is better than gold, than fine gold, and my revenue, the salary that I pay you, is more than choice silver. Say wisdom. Christ revealed as the wisdom of God. My dear people, listen to me. When the wisdom of God truly lands upon your life, right from where you are, you will begin to rise in a way that will first surprise you before it surprises everybody around you. The assignment of wisdom is to dress you with the robe of royalty. There is something called the grave clothes. I hope you know that. Let me show you. John 11, 44. 43 and 44. Let's look at it. John chapter 11. This was Lazarus. When Jesus called Lazarus to come forth out of the grave, the Bible says when he had thus spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Look at verse 44. The Bible says, and he that was dead came forth. Read the remaining part with me. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Hold on. It would have just said with clothes. There are clothes that belong to the grave. There are clothes that belong to failure. Situations have their garments that you can wear upon you. You can dress in a way that you don't have to tell me you're a military man. I know you're a military man. You can dress in a way that I know you are a lawyer. You can dress in a way that I know you are an engineer. You can dress in a way. Every profession has clothes. The Bible says even the grave has clothes. Grave clothes. Failure has garments. Do you not believe this? That he can give them beauty for ashes. Is that true? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. The assignment of wisdom is to come to you like Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins in the book of Esther, and wisdom will begin to dress you. You came from a background with grave clothes, failure clothes, delay clothes. That means I don't need to ask what your situation is. I just need to look at what you are wearing. You can wear honor like a garment. You can wear shame like a garment. You can wear delay like a garment. You can wear poverty like a garment. Believe me, I'm not just motivating you. It is true. I can look at your life and I see a display of the honor, the beauty, the order of God. And I can look at your life and I see that everything there is just ashes. You are wearing certain clothes. Let me tell you the assignment of wisdom. When the anointing of the spirit comes, it took power to bring Lazarus out of the grave. But he told the men, he said, walk to him, lose him, give us 44. The Bible says Jesus said to them, my power has been displayed now in his coming out of the grave. But if you leave him that way, he is out of the grave, but he's still in trouble because his hands and his feet were tied and a garment was on him. He said, lose him, walk to him, use order and principles to walk to him, lose him and let him go. The power of God can bring you healing. The power of God can bring you deliverance. But it takes the wisdom of God to lose you.
from that shackle of shame financial shame whatever there is something you must know leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 please give it to us you want to see the manifestation of the power and the glory of god read with me koinonia ready one to read and moses said uh-huh this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you there is what you must know there is what you must do and then you will see the glory of God financially you will see the glory of God in every area of your life when a rich man came to Jesus he asked a question he said good master what must I do that's a responsible man speaking I know that I will, it, something will be required of me and Jesus told him no 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 when it has to do with the matters of salvation it's not just about doing things good master what is my own commitment what do i need to learn what do i need to know what do i need to do to be saved while we are praying you must pray and cry to the god of heaven to show you what you need to do for some of you while the word of god is coming with fire the spirit of god will speak to you i told you last year go and register that company you've been sitting in fear your destiny helper has been waiting in prophecy but the courage to go and register the company now he tells you what to do and remember like mary whatsoever he saith to do do it you know the risk of filling six pots with water and then fetching it the power of god will turn the water to wine but there are principles you need to fill the pots put order put everything and then now go and start serving when christ is revealed in the midst of his people he is revealed as the power of god the power to break yokes the power to change conditions is that true but he's also revealed as the wisdom of God. I can tell you this. The problem is usually not with the power of God. The problem is that most people do not know how to access the wisdom of God and put it to use. Doth not wisdom cry. When wisdom cries towards your direction tonight, don't ignore it. Just in search for power. If the anointing comes to you as wisdom, it is still God visiting you. If the anointing comes to you as power, it is still God visiting you. You must open up your spirit. Don't choose the power of God and ignore the wisdom of God. And don't choose the wisdom of God and ignore the power of God. Christ revealed among them that are called. He comes as the power of God and he comes as the wisdom of God. When you read the next chapter, it tells you about the hidden wisdom of God that was reserved for our glory the hidden wisdom then it says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit why because they are spiritually discerned the scriptures before verse 24 tells us that god has decided to use foolish things foolish things there mean weak things because you see when you are accessing the wisdom of god it will come with instructions and principles that don't make sense for instance go around jericho seven times and shout it is the foolishness of the ways of god for instance there is he that scattered and increased it is the wisdom of god this is the danger of over dependence on principles and philosophies of men because sometimes when god comes to you it will be a simple principle there are times here you tell you hear me tell you shout you know jesus it does not make sense you think on my own i would want to make intelligent people to just shout like that but that is what he gives there are times i can tell you be quiet instrumentalist you be quiet just do your thing it is the wisdom of god there is a relationship between the wisdom of God and the power of God. It is Christ that brings it. For some of you, you have been chasing the power alone and God is telling you, you are doing well. But in addition to that, you must access the wisdom of God. You need order and beauty and glory in your life. It is important for you to understand that the wisdom of God must be at work in you. By me, kings reign and princes rule with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness god revealed this to me and so i know 
that there are many people here. You came here for miracle service to visit you. Do you know, I found out that most people's problems, out of every three people, two is financial, is their financial issues. Are we together? Either some kind of maybe financial constraint, financial limitations, and we, we don't shy away from these things. Any responsible ministry must be responsive to the realities of the times. You can see what is happening around our nation and generally around the globe. It is a risk to not have the wisdom of God that provides for financial stability. And don't you let anyone tell you it is not necessary. There are people today who only God knows how many people found their way to this place. There are people probably, you, you've heard people testify here, and they can tell you, I gave everything, I didn't have anything. You can imagine that kind of risk. Imagine a father with his wife and three or four or five children completely clueless as to where the next meal will come from. And yet that man gave his life to Christ. No. No. As that anointing comes upon you tonight, don't just expect, it's not just about witches and wizards. Christ, the wisdom of God, coming to you. When the wisdom of God comes to you, it speaks. It tells you what to do. The Bible says, the labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them. Why? Because they do not know the road to the city. Just because you are confused does not mean the road has been closed. The road is there. But until you find out, Christ has come tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. He has come as a supernatural bailout system. It's up to you to open up your heart and say, Lord, I believe. Let me wrap up by saying this again for emphasis. Wisdom can decorate. Oh. Let me show you a scripture. I shared in just this morning, or was it yesterday? And I can't remember. I think it was this morning. I just want to show you something very powerful. Esther chapter 6. I just thought to show you an example of what God is doing to someone and doing over someone's life. May that be you. On that night, give it to us, 6 verse 1. On that night, what night? The night, listen, listen. This was the night Mordecai was visited the night to his downfall. Do you know that Haman had planned that by the next day? They've built the gallows already. Haman was on his way to ask for permission that by the morrow, by the morrow, Mordecai would be gone. And the Bible says that night. I know that tomorrow is when your landlord is coming, but this night, leave tomorrow. Tomorrow is when they gave you the last chance over whatever it is, but this night. The Bible says, on that night, his destiny helper could not sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. Two, and it was found written may it be found written about you listen i hope you know it was not the king that wrote this the king is just hearing what was written that means the person who would have written it if he forgot to write it there will be no nothing like that that calls for reward he found where it was written it always starts with what is written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains. These were wicked men who wanted to kill the king. And Mordecai revealed it, and then they, they, you know, they destroyed them and all of that. The keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus, verse 3. And the king said, what honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? He was part of my success. He was a system of rescue for me. But what has happened to him? I told you that honor is when you are perceived to match your true worth. This was a man who was a deliverer, but not rewarded to match that. Now, the king is saying what honor had been done. The king's servant that ministered to him said there is nothing done for him. Verse 4. 
And the king said, who is in the court? Guess who was there? Haman. God can use anything, including Haman. When God is determined to bless you, he can play the even enemies like a chess to put things together and now robe you with honor. Listen, the part I want you to focus on is everything that was done to Mordecai. Because in the name of Jesus, the Lord will make it happen in your life. Yeah. Give us that scripture. Let's hurry up. Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house. Why? To speak unto the king to hang Mordecai. On the gallows that he had prepared for him. Very wicked man. He was so sure the king would give him permission that he had built the gallows in advance. So that as soon as the permission is there, nothing will stop. Do you know, the king, when you read the previous verses, the king, the, Haman said, every time they gave him honor, he was happy. But anytime he's passing and he sees Mordecai at the gate, he'll say, this man is still here. The king's servant said, Behold, her man standeth in the court, and he said, Let him come in. Watch this now. So her man came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? May that be me tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ. The king delighted to honor. The king delighted to honor. Now her man thought in his heart, Look at this evil man. To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? He's about to describe something that will happen to you tonight. And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, do the following. Number one, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear. Even though he desired this out of an evil heart. But God showed us that he's not afraid and ashamed to let us carry that same robe. A robe of royalty to wear. Number two, the horse that the king rided upon. Go and study ancient history. You will find out that the best of the trained horses were for the kings. The horse. When you ride on a horse and someone walks afoot, the difference will be clear. The horse that the king rided upon and a royal crown which set upon his head. Verse 9. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of the one who the king or of the king's most noble princes that they will array that man. <laughs> Look at this. They said he should take him on horseback to the streets of the city. Everybody say influence the streets of the city and proclaim before him thus shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor verse 10 and the king said to her man make haste and take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said and do even so to joshua selman mm. Yes, he came from a background that may not be anything to write home about. I know he sits at the gate, but still do him the honor. He, he does not qualify for it. Not by his background. I have spoken. Do him that honor. And he said, let nothing fail of all that has been spoken. Does that look to you like Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2? The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise a sound we raise a sound over the nations of the earth hallelujah Listen, do you know when the wisdom of God comes upon your life, the wisdom of God can turn you. I've seen some of my pictures, you know, I don't like looking at them. But 
I've seen some of my interesting pictures. I remember how impressed I was with myself at the time I snapped that picture. And I am surprised to see the contrast. I believed I dressed well. I believed that the tailor was fair on me. I believed I was at my best. I still remember how confident I felt snapping those pictures. But now looking at those things today, sometimes I wonder and I say, my God. That something can happen to you today. It will take a telescope to look at your yesterday. By making's reign a robe of honor upon you. For someone you came for this miracle service tonight, you are out of the grave, but your hands and your feet are still bound with grave clothes. I don't know how many of you would like to give such a person a hug. There are madmen all around our cities, and some of them dress in ways that you wonder how they dressed. Who dressed them that way? And sometimes they come to you with joy, even wanting to shake you. Why do you run away? At least it's God's creature. Why are you running away from the person? You don't run away from animals like that. But here is somebody in the image of God that you're running away because there's something about his dressing. If a madman wears suit and tie, puts a nice perfume, and is still mad, you most likely will not run away because he does not look mad. Is that true? So one of the ways you identify problems is by what you are wearing. You can wear a garment that drives every good thing from your life. Please hear me. It is possible that a garment is upon you that makes people forget you. It is possible that a garment is upon you. It says remove the grave clothes, lose him, and let him go. I didn't bring him out to keep him at the door of the tomb. I want him to go. He is out by power, but it will take wisdom to lose him and let him go. Is someone ready to pray? Jump up on your feet and cry unto the Lord. Reveal your glory in my life as the power of God and as the wisdom of God. Please go ahead and pray. Some like Lazarus would need to be called forth from one dimension to the other from failure to victory from defeat to success but there are others who are already out but you need the know how to remove the grave clothes you need to know what to do go ahead and pray reveal yourself oh god in the name of Jesus Christ, reveal yourself. Are you praying? As the wisdom of God, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Wisdom tells you what to do. And it works closely with understanding that tells you how to do. There is always something to do. You are glorious. So glorious in your ways. You are glorious. So glorious in your ways. You are powerful. So powerful in your ways. You are powerful. So powerful in your ways. You are mighty, so mighty in your way. You are mighty, you're mighty in your way. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. 
Yahweh. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are mighty, you are mighty. I was very, very humbled. I always am broken when I hear of the sacrifices that people make for every service. From as early as 8, 9, 10, there were people already here. Some of you have been here since morning, inside, outside, everywhere, enduring. Some of you have not even eaten just to encounter the God of heaven. Do you really believe that God will keep you that long? Just to share the grace and go back. No. Hello, him, Adonai. Hello, him, Adonai. Hello, him, Adonai. Hello, him, Adonai. The power of the Most High revealed in the midst of His people. The wisdom and the grace of this God. Alana bakata prende gete balakosi, shali gete prende gete parasu zeke deve, shada prata katusa deve la hasia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start tonight with the sick. I really want to minister to the sick. Listen, let me tell you this. The healing ministry is a very cardinal, cardinal validator of the gospel. The healing ministry. Remove the healing ministry from the gospel. Um, you have reduced its potency by a very serious degree. You read the Bible, everywhere the communication of the truth of the gospel, everywhere you find the message of the gospel or the communication of the doctrine, you find the healing ministry. Everywhere Jesus is revealed, you find the healing ministry. Please look up. Let me tell you something about the healing ministry. Why does God heal? For many reasons. One of them being that there is no human being who has been given the privilege of entering two bodies in a lifetime. As benevolent as God is, he can replace parts in the body. But we do not have any record of anyone who, le who left one whose spirit was extracted out of one body. Completely. Organs have been transplanted within the same organism. Everyone is given one body per lifetime. One body per lifetime. Satan, knowing this, you don't receive forgiveness only once. You don't receive mercy only once. But this body, the moment you are born, that body remains with you. And if anything happens to that body, you have lost your chance of continuity as far as the earth is concerned are we together there is no record in scripture 
and there is no record as we know in history science has not come close to extracting a human spirit out of a body and transferring it into another body the only person who wanted to do that was satan himself when he was looking for the body of moses when moses died he wanted his body so that a demon could enter that body and he will create a a false moses and michael stopped him and said the lord that means this is not is not permitted the lord rebuke you listen to me bodies matter ask satan what he was looking for in a dead body the body of moses moses had died and satan said i am still interested in the body so everything that afflicts you is ministering death in a measure to you satan's ultimate goal in sickness and affliction is to break help or help those under the anointing to deteriorate your body now listen i have taught you here that there is a threshold health condition for your spirit to live in your body when your body is broken and deteriorated beyond that level the spirit will no longer be able to stay and the spirit will have to live in a process called death even in resurrection the spirit still enters the same body the only time bodies will change is when the king himself makes that decree and this body will be changed from one that is corrupted to one incorruptible this is what the bible teaches us but that until then you have a responsibility to protect your body we protect our bank accounts more than our bodies we protect our cars a vehicle that can have an accident and you can save and buy another one but the one body most of us are using more than one cars multiple cars and you keep changing them even if nothing is wrong you are just tired of that body of a car you change another one but when this body goes bad so satan knows this everywhere god will take you is this body that will take your spirit so when jesus heals he's making a very serious statement how does he heal by correcting faulty conditions medical doctors will tell us that a man is as healthy as his organs his tissues and satan would start afflicting those things one by one we have all kinds of systems biology and medicine teaches us and most of us here it's possible that you have one medical report or the other that is threatening you an organ in your body some kind of condition i want you to believe to heal means to introduce the power of god like a drug listen you know medicine really teaches us how healing works when you pick a drug say you have headache and you pick paracetamol or anything you don't have to tell the drug where to go to your job is to swallow it is that true when you swallow it whatever happens at that point is none of your business again the drugs goes to your body and you know that the drug is working by looking out for changes in your body there are some of you when you swallow some drugs you start sweating you feel sleepy there are certain drugs they say eat before taking it they, are, you, you know, they give all kinds of conditions but when that drug enters your body it begins to walk the pharmacology of that drug has already been predetermined by those who those who have designed it yours is to swallow it and watch the wonder a tiny piece of whatever it is and you swallow and it begins to do all kinds of things and sometimes medicine has advanced now to encourage us when they want to market certain products they animate the way the drugs destroy those germs have you seen those kinds of things if they want to market soap they show children with jams on their faces and then they show the mother buffing the child and you watch what that soap the 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 you know the, what they call them now the active ingredients what it does to those jams that's the same way the anointing works when the anointing enters your body you don't have to say go to my head or go to my hand you're placing your hand there just as a point of contact for your own faith not to encourage the anointing the anointing knows what to do the anointing starts searching for what does not look like the garden of eden 
it goes to your head everything is fine it goes to your heart and finds out that the devil is trying to put a hole in your heart let me tell you what it does the same power that raised Lazarus the same power that raised Christ from the dead is administered to that body and listen there are times that certain bodily parts have been so deteriorated you will need a new one and a new one can come Lazarus had died for three days we're all intelligent people if you die for three days there's something called embalmment is that true and let me tell you the way they used to embalm people those days even if you are pretending you must die if they embalm you that way you, you saw how they tied the man if you're acting and, and playing games and they are done embalming you you must die they cover everywhere from head to toe so they, they, they cannot, you can't doubt that Lazarus died. And yet, you think that some of the organs had not packed up and failed? Blood was not flowing in that body. And yet, when the master said, Lazarus, Kala Parusiata. The same way in the name of Jesus, we are going to be making decrees. Now, hear me. When the word of the Lord comes for your healing, you have two responsibilities. Number one, to believe in Jesus and to believe in the vessel that he's using. Number two, to take a step of faith. What is a step of faith? Actions of obedience. The Bible says, as they went, not when they wanted to go. Go and show yourself to the priest. That was suicidal. If they ever appeared before the priest leprous, they would be banished forever. As they went. That means when the power of God comes, if you couldn't walk, you have to take a step of faith. Remember, Acts chapter 3. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The Bible says the man sat down and was watching, and he held his hand and lifted him, and he, leaping, stood. If you lay your hands and they pray and you're just watching, you most likely may not receive anything. You receive by faith, and you begin to check yourself. It's a condition that you need to run to the medical stand to ask them to check you. Oh, I, I came with HIV and the word has come. I need to go there to check. My blood pressure, for instance, is whatever over, over whatever. The most important thing is that report is not good. I need this change. And once they pray, you don't sit down and say, I believe. Please check this for me. You see, let me tell you, medicine and the supernatural were not designed to be enemies medicine confirms the supernatural that's why you don't fight doctors those who fight doctors to show that they are powerful are in ignorance doctors are symbols of god's mercy medicine if you are truly healed science will confirm it if you are healed of hiv or cancer or whatever it is um it is the medical confirmation that validates to us that the power of god has really come but to believe that the power of God cannot correct bodily conditions is to insult the resurrection power. I'm ready to pray for the sick now. We had such profound, phenomenal miracles in Joss. Um, yesterday, particularly during the miracle service, it was such a humbling move of the Spirit of God. You can do well to watch the video for your own personal edification. I believe that it should be on our koinonia global page or so just watch it and learn it's not just to show that a man of god is powerful especially for those of you who are in ministry there's something about watching to see the power of god on display these are not some gimmicks that you're playing games no it's one thing to be healed at home and come and testify but it's another thing to testify real time are we together you can go to a shop, for instance, to buy popcorn, the one they've made, two days old, three days old, but there are people who will leave that one and they want the one that is popping. There is an experience. People love freshness. This is why it's good that you receive testimonies and come and testify, but there's something about the power of God on display, real time. It proves to people here and now that Jesus is still alive. 
are you ready now in one minute i'd like you to declare that any sickness within your body that is not of god any planting it must leave right now and if you are standing for someone i know there are people watching in hospitals there are people watching by sick beds i want you to believe take your eyes away from the infirmity and pray soul my spirit breathe upon that fibroid breathe upon that lump breathe upon that genotype issue breathe upon that bone condition breathe upon HIV breathe upon cancer breathe upon rheumatoid arthritis Breathe upon any and all cardiovascular issues. Breathe upon weakness in body. Breathe upon eye conditions. Breathe upon ear conditions. Breathe upon reproductive issues. Breathe upon digestive issues. Breathe upon respiratory issues. Breathe upon neurological issues. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please hear me. I am going to pray. There are so many people outside. And all the overflows. And thousands more following from across the globe. Give Jesus a chance. Christ is about to be revealed as the power of God I believe in miracles I truly believe in miracles and right now I want to pray for you now listen don't start calculating and asking how will it happen just like that Mary asked that question already how shall these things be seen that I know not a man he said the power of the highest so the power of the highest is about to overshadow you and listen listen how the holy spirit got to the womb of mary leave that to the intelligence of god that is the same way his power he does not need to open you with a surgical knife he can get to your systems your organs and correct things what is your own assignment to believe in jesus as the healer to believe in his servant as the vessel and to take steps of faith so when i pray for you i want you to believe whether or not i mention your case you must believe from the depth of your heart and i'm going to ask you to check yourself and do what you could not do the moment you check yourself i'll be giving you a chance for those who have been healed everywhere inside and outside the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you if and when i ask you to come out i want you to come out don't be afraid the moment you find out that you can do now what you could not do before believe in jesus take your eyes away from the sickness I learned this from Benny Hinn. He said in, in all his years of crusading around the globe, he found out that people who were focused on their infirmities would hardly get healed. And so worship helps us to focus on Jesus. And you take your eyes away from the bodily condition. And the moment you look at Jesus, you are changed into that which you are seeing. Place your hand now as an act of faith. 
everywhere you are trusting God for a miracle, you can stand in for someone. I see people following from across the globe. Some of you are lifting pictures of loved ones. Some of you are standing in for families. Remember, there are whole families with all kinds of conditions. Give Jesus a chance. Just help those under the anointing. I'm about to pray right now. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus. So you can trust answers to this prayer. Lay your hands everywhere. If it's your head, lay your hands on your head. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. And if you're fine and whole and there's nothing wrong with you, you can stand in for someone. Absolutely. The centurion stood in for his child. Majesty. Just keep your hand there. Your majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hand. Your majesty. Majesty. Forever I changed by your love in the presence of your majesty. keep those hands there now you do mighty things you do glorious things the healing power of Jesus is flowing you're a faithful God awesome is your name you do mighty things. You do glorious things. Shaba la sabrande gebaratush kalibra hasia. One more time. You do mighty things. You do such healing streams in this place right now. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God, the one exalted today as Lord and Christ, I rebuke the root cause of every infirmity. I rebuke the root cause of every disease. I rebuke the root cause of every plague. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit, help those under the anointing. Every spirit of infirmity, every devil behind medical conditions, blindness, deafness, dumbness, blood conditions, allergies, in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I banish you from these bodies right now in Jesus' name. Now I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. 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 From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I bring you the life and power of Jesus. Be made whole right now in Jesus' name. Every blind eye, partial blindness or complete blindness, you could not see well. In the name of Jesus, I command begin to see now. Every deaf ear, your left ear or your right ear, I declare the ears open right now in Jesus' name every kind of allergy every kind of allergy around your body your skin i declare by the power that raised christ be healed now 
every growth in your body any part of your body at all i decree and declare be healed now the lord is ministering to me my god i'm hearing help that gentleman i'm hearing the word colon cancer colon cancer be healed right now in the name of jesus christ and i'm seeing someone follow this meeting you are following from federal medical center here in abuja the power of god is touching you right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord is healing someone of severe bleeding in the gum you have severe bleeding your gum the moment you go to brush you just find out that blood starts gushing out right now the help them please the power of god is touching you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ back pain the lord is healing back pain in the name of jesus everyone on wheelchair everyone on crutches using any kind of aid life to your limbs right now i declare begin to walk in the name of jesus everyone plagued by stroke partial paralysis and stroke probably they carried you in here in the name of jesus life to your body rise up and walk right now in the name of jesus christ there's someone you i don't know if, is that you lost your sense of smell or you can't smell completely in the name of jesus let that sense be restored now i've seen god minister this case before that he's showing me you are you are a young lady you are not pregnant yet you are lactating you are producing breast milk in the name of jesus the power of god is coming upon you right now and i declare be healed right now in the name of jesus christ be healed right now the lord is healing a condition i'm seeing a vision and i'm seeing pid this is what i'm seeing it, whatever that means in the name of jesus i decree and declare be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now now the lord is showing me a very interesting condition here there is a woman i'm not a doctor um and, and of course it's not everything we say here there are people with different from different um, age ranges and all of that and then we're on air but there is something in your system that does not allow the seed to get to you to be pregnant i see that that seed dies even before it gets there because of a a condition that you have right now the power of god i don't know where that person is right now the power of god is touching you right now in the mighty name of jesus christ you can see the testimony of our dear sister who came here 22 months of carrying a child 22 months anything in your body that is not the planting of the lord i flush it out right now now listen we are still praying it is it is still i'm still ministering healing but i'm seeing the power of god moving away i'm seeing at least this is at least 21 people from what i'm seeing there are objects that move physically you feel it in your body it begins to move sometimes from your leg down to various parts of your body this is not like you are dreaming physically you feel things moving the power of god is coming upon you right now at least 21 people be healed in the name of jesus There is a gentleman here you came here as a stammerer you will marvel and wonder right now that stammering stops now that stammering stops now now i don't know i'm seeing someone i don't know if he's in this you know this vicinity but you have like a tumor in your brain a tumor that means something is growing that is is a tumor like it's, it's cancerous in your brain I don't know if you are following online but in the name of jesus i want you to release your faith i bring you life be healed now be healed now 
I'm seeing someone in the overflow outside. The overflow outside. You're beginning to have symptoms. It's like urinary problems. But it's not really a urinary, urinary problem. From what God is revealing to me, this is the early stage of prostrate. Prostrates, that prostrate cancer like it happens to men. This is what God is telling me. Outside, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. I'm seeing a woman that takes in. You get, you actually get pregnant, but it never crosses the third month. By the third month, a spirit comes to you. You will have a dream and see either a human being or an animal chasing you. Or you will see yourself bleeding and you wake up physically bleeding. Help them please. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil to let you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a man. You go to ease yourself and you're urinating blood. I don't know what that condition is, but you're urinating blood. In the name of Jesus, right now, as I'm praying for you, may the power of God touch you now. There's someone you've been feeling something on your throat. It's as if um, you know how you swallow something and it does not go down and it remains there. It's been stuck for a long time. In fact, you are considering going to go and see the doctor so that they will check it. Maybe it's something that they need to take away. Right now as I'm praying, the power of God is touching you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing at least two people with this condition, my God. The Lord is really healing. I'm seeing several cases. I'm seeing you wake up in the night and sit, just sit on your bed. You don't sleep for more than three hours. No matter how long, there is a spirit. You can't, once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep again. This thing has deteriorated your health. I don't know who that person is. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. That person is at the back the back of this auditorium this is what i'm saying that whoever that person is there is a spirit you are at the back of this auditorium may the lord bring you healing now in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing someone my goodness whatever you eat you have to throw it out uh, throw it up like you know how children eat and, and, and throw up. There's someone like that. You are unable, in fact, you are being concerned that you are losing weight. It's not like you are, you are losing weight because you eat and then you just feel like you need to throw up something and you throw up what you have eaten. It's a demonic condition. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. Be healed now. I'm seeing... A lady this thing has brought shame for you a part you had a dream and from that dream it's like they shaved you know how you go to the Babylon saloon and they shave part of your is it your head or something like that there's someone you had that and from that time your hair does not grow again this is a very very demonic thing right now whoever you are fire is coming on that person now nose bleeding there's this thing they call nose bleeding that you just stand i'm seeing a gentleman you even wake up in the morning sometimes and you see blood your nose is bleeding you've gone to the hospital they treated you they gave you drugs but it seems like it's not gone right now the power of god is touching you be healed in the name of jesus christ be healed in the name of jesus christ now i'm seeing someone your 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 tie is it a surgery it's like they had a surgery and uh, of course respectfully speaking i don't know if it's that it was not done well but it looks like something is still broken there i'm seeing like the bone the bone here is still broken you are still feeling the pain it's not like you cannot walk but there is something broken there i declare healing right now now whether i mention your case or not be healed in jesus name be healed in Jesus' name. 
we change medical conditions right now in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus be healed in Jesus name hallelujah now there is a woman sorry to have to describe the condition I'm seeing that your left breast started growing mysteriously like something is it looks like a lump or some you noticed it you are at the back this is a demonic thing you have not shared this thing with anybody I'm seeing this is a demonic thing it looks like a lump but if we don't pray against it they will tell you that you need to go for surgery because I'm seeing that this the devil wants to put cancer in your body we cause that spirit now Hallelujah. Hmm. I'm watching a vision right now. And I'm seeing someone pick like a cup of water to drink. But that cup of water you see, it was not ordinary water. From the day you drank it, something started happening to your teeth. It's like you are losing your teeth. One by one, you've extracted some now. And it looks like it's, it's, like it's rottening. I don't know, it's, it's a condition... You are feeling is literally it's as if you can pull out your teeth i don't know who that person is by the power that raised christ from the dead be healed now now any health pattern running through families whether hepatitis my god whether hiv headache I'm going to mention a condition right now and when I mention that condition the power of God will start coming on a few people please don't be embarrassed this is a family I'm seeing symptoms of what we call obesity you don't have to be fat to, you are carrying that thing within you the power of God is setting you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ inside outside this is at least seven people is obey you know what obesity is that you you begin to get uh, you know ridiculously fat without controlling it whether you eat or not in the name of jesus i rebuke that demonic thing from your blood be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name there's a lady right now as i'm speaking to you you came here with terrible abdominal pain like abdominal pain it looks like there's fire all around your stomach you're going to feel that thing one more time and then it leaves you will never feel it again i bring you healing right now in jesus name now i believe that several miracles have happened here not just the ones that i i i you know i declared by the word of knowledge there are several people who have been healed this is what i want you to do we're going to hurry up I'm going to ask you to check yourself and the moment you check yourself already miracles are happening I will ask you to quickly please those who are outside all of the overflows and then those who are following online you can send in your testimonies all across the world let us know what the Lord is doing for you right now there are people within this auditorium and there are people outside this a place the overflows even across the road the power of God has touched you check yourself I want you to make your way very quickly and come and stand here let's have a few testimonies very quickly let's celebrate them as they come celebrate them very quickly as they come hallelujah now while they are coming are you seeing the Lord touching people koinonia is this the best you can do please open the doors for those who are coming from several overflows let them make their way to the front in the name of Jesus Christ whilst you are seated in the next one or two minutes I want you to pray in the spirit and declare that the spirit of poverty and lack over my life just do what I'm asking you to do break it right now by prayer lift your voice and pray whilst you are seated everywhere those who have been healed make your way to the front make your way to the front in the name of Jesus while we are praying check yourself outside any and all miracles check yourself all the overflows do what you couldn't do before you need to go to the medical stand to check yourself do so very quickly do so very quickly Jesus is healing Jesus is healing 
you could not move your body move your body right now you couldn't see far try to look far right now please make sure you direct those who are coming from outside if you need to open the doors for them let's know so that we have them here quickly those who are healed and coming from outside check yourself in the name of jesus christ go ahead You are rebuking the spirit that is behind poverty. You are rebuking the spirit that is back of poverty. There are principles, but there are spirits. It is God's desire to prosper you. Keep coming. Keep coming in the name of Jesus. Miracles are happening by the Spirit. Healings are happening by the Spirit. Miracles are happening. The Lord is also showing me a woman. You gave birth and since you put to birth, your body has not been normal something happened to you and it looks like you've been sick having like fever again and again and again long after you are done giving birth the power of god is also touching you right now and he's bringing you healing he's bringing you life in the name of jesus if you're coming to share your testimony make your way to the front very quickly usher's protocol let's direct them very quickly so that we save time Awesome God, how great Thou art! You alone, mighty are Your miracles. I stand in awe of Your holy name, and Lord, we bow and worship. Awesome God, how great Thou art! You alone, mighty are Your miracles. Some of them can move here. There's no space. Sir, this man wearing white, please can you stand? Don't be embarrassed. Can you place your hand on your neck? I want to pray for you. I don't know what is there, but the Lord is asking me to rebuke it. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. And I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may the anointing of the Spirit bring you life right now. And bring you healing. I command a release for you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Now, just hold on before we start taking the testimony. Please keep it. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kete kato. Kete branda kata pa koto skoto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.